All right, we are recording now. So I am gonna go through a lot of resources that are on our high school page. So we go to kyvl.org. And if you have a device, feel free to follow along. So I'm going to 4K12 students, hi. And the first um, sort of example that I wanna run through with you, we have something called Academic Search Complete, which is from a company called EBSCO. It's full text magazines and journals and some eBooks, uh, nonfiction eBooks. It is built for primarily college level, so you might have some of your advanced uh, students who could use it, dual credit students. Um, it's heavily used in the community colleges and the universities, but then it also has even more high level content that would be uh, appropriate for PhD level. But we do have it on our high school page because there is still a lot of good content for high school students. So what I'm gonna do is just see what we have, although I, I, I know what we have because I've already looked, um, creative writing prompts as a search. So we've got 39 results with this one. And what I liked about this is these are geared more towards instructors. So these are more teacher or faculty oriented um, using strategy, instruction and self-regulation to improve gifted students' creative writing, story writing, planning and creativity. Um, there's a few writer prompt, writing prompts, but I'm gonna skip that for the moment dive into writing with first line prompts. Uh, power in pictures, how a school-wide photo library can build a community of readers and writers. And further down, uh, nurturing faculty student dialogue, deep learning and creativity through journal journal writing exercises. I liked this one above from educational leadership on teaching argument. Uh, 10 writing prompt tools for creative inspiration. And don't, I've already looked at this particular article. Don't be put off by the fact that it has uh, power tools in the subject headings. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. There's indexing that went, went wrong because it has nothing to do with power tools. It really is about uh, creative writing prompts. I will write to you with my eyes, reflective text and image journals in the undergraduate classroom. So those are just some, some things that you can find so if I look at this PDF article, Power in Pictures, the PDFs of the articles look like they would in the original hard copy publication. So um, the article from here, there's a couple things that you can do. Over here on the blue bar, there's download PDF. So I can open that and then over on the right, there is a download button in the upper right hand corner. And I need to give it a name. The default name is content server. So you wanna name it something that you're gonna remember or you know, take part of the article title. Then I'm going back to my result page. And then over here on the right, you can put articles into Google <laughs> Classroom. Do you all use Google Classroom? Yes. Great, so maybe not this article, 
but there might be something else that you would want to put in Google Classroom as an assignment or just, you know, as supplementary material. So that's integrated. There's a Google Drive button. And what it will do, um, obviously I sign in multiple Gmail accounts, but I'm gonna go with my primary Gmail account. And then what it will do, let me show you. If I go to Google Drive, If an EBSCO folder doesn't already exist, it will create one and then it will put the article in my EBSCO folder so I can get back to it at another time. There's also an email feature and this is good for students. Let me show you why. Over here on the right, um, it says citation format. So just as, a, as an example, I can email this article to myself or somebody else. Well done, there we go. And it will <coughs> send the email, attach the PDF if it exists, and then it will also include the citation in whatever format that I've chosen. So great for doing research. Um, I've got two kids, age 10 and 18. And what I've been teaching them for a number of years is that research doesn't have to be this big thing that you do for two or three hours in one sitting. I do a lot of work on my phone in the mornings when I'm having coffee. And what I have a tendency to do is to email things to myself so that I can open those PDFs on my phone later when I have a few minutes and I can do my reading. So I love the email feature. There also is this piece of paper on the right-hand side. It's the citation button. So I can pull up the list of citation formats. And here is the article citation. There's also something called a permalink, which is the two pieces of chain link here at the bottom of the tools list. And what this does, if you, for whatever reason, if you couldn't do the Google Classroom integration, or you wanted to build a reading list, you can copy this permalink into a Google Doc or into Google Classroom. And the student can then click on that link and be taken to this article as we're seeing it now. It will open this window and then they can do their reading. So does anybody have questions about the tools? Google Classroom, Google Drive, emailing, the citation button. I don't, but I like the idea of emailing it to myself simply because it seems like to me if I have, if I leave something unread in my inbox, it's like almost like a to-do list. Check those things right. off. I think I would, I would totally remember things better if I emailed them to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that was called Academic Search Complete. The next one I wanna show you is further down the list and it's called MAS Ultra, M-A-S Ultra. This is built for high school students. And so I'm gonna click on MAS Ultra. And I'm gonna do creative writing prompts again. and click search. Pardon me, had to cough. So what I have a list of here, 
Um, are links to different articles about uh, writing prompts. So we've got some things from Newsweek, Caval Literary Cavalcade. Um, there's a journal called Writer. And so what I wanna show you, I'm just gonna go to the top of the page where it says full text finder. I'm going to click on that. And Moz Ultra is linked to another database that we have called Alt Press Watch. So I'm going to click find this article in full text from Alt Press Watch. And then here I have a, a big long list of writing prompts from the publication called The Writer. So they're not long. If I just click on the PDF full text of number nine here, I wanna show you what I mean. So I scroll up a little bit and this is just the writing prompt. Be secretly judgmental. Come up with a New Year's resolution for someone other than yourself, such as a neighbor or stranger, and imagine what his life or her life might be like adopting this change. So this was just a thought. Um, if you needed writing prompts for a creative writing class, um, I know when I took that in high school, um, our instructor would give us writing prompts quite often. And then sometimes he would play music and ask us to write a story, you know, based on what the music was telling us and it was instrumental. So that was always a lot of fun in class doing that. So any questions about Moz Ultra and the creative writing prompts and how to find them? Okay, next thing I wanna show you up here on kyvl.org under quick search, I'm just gonna click go and I'll explain why. When this page loads, there's something on the blue bar called publication title search. So if I was perhaps looking for some poetry to have the students read and reflect on, um, I've got a number of titles uh, to choose from. We've got Looking Out, Looking In, Anthology of Latino poet Poetry. We've got Parnassus and the American Poetry Review. So if I open up American Poetry Review. There's a link here for full text access. And this shows you that the American Poetry Review is in the database Academic Search Complete, which, I've, which I gave you a quick demo on creative writing prompts. Alt Press Watch, which also had writing prompts and Moz Ultra, which is the high school database. So I could choose any of these four and open up American Poetry Review. So I'm just gonna choose Academic Search Complete because it's on the top. And then I can do two things here. If I was looking for something specific or a subject, I could do a search within this publication but also over here on the right, I have a list of all the issues of American Poetry Review that are available. So we've got a backlog back to 1993, back file. So I can click on 2020 and I can pull up the September, October issue of American Poetry Review. And then here we have 
all the poems that are in this particular issue. So again, this is something from a company called EBSCO. So the look and feel should uh, look familiar because we looked at Academic Search Complete and Moz Ultra that are also by EBSCO. So I can click the PDF full text. And here are the poems. And again, it looks like it does because it's a PDF. It looks like it does in the actual um, hard copy publication. So this is just one page with five poems on it. And from here, I can click the download button in the upper right hand corner and put it on my hard drive. And it can stay on my hard drive for years. There's not any sort of digital rights management that's gonna come take it off my hard drive. So that's a, that's a great thing. There's the Google Classroom integration over here on the right hand side. So I could assign this. And you all of course know how to do that. So I could do that. I could put it in my Google Drive. And sometimes you shouldn't get this message. Um, sometimes when I'm doing Zoom, it I don't understand how it interferes, but it it doesn't like it sometimes. But for you all, it should work just fine. I can email this to myself or somebody else or multiple people if I'm in a study group of some sort. And again, I can, if I email it to myself, I can choose the citation format and that will be part of the email. I can click the piece of paper and here's my list of citations that I can copy and paste. And I can also click on the chain link to get the permalink. <coughs> Pardon me. Never ever copy the link that's the web address because that's just a moment in time and it won't get you back to this. Um, you have to get the permalink either from the citation or email it to yourself or click the chain link to get the permalink. And then from, you can copy that permalink into a Google Doc. So again, what I did was went to quick search. I just clicked go. And then I went to publication title search and you could try other uh, subjects or magazine or journal titles if there are things that you're familiar with and you want to see if KYBL has it. This will search through everything that we've got from EBSCO and ProQuest. And there are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of titles. Um, thousands, many, many. <laughs> So that's why we don't have an A to Z list of publications because it would be so long. Um, so we turned on this publication title search so you could search that way. So any questions on how to use that? Or any examples that people want me to try? Okay, the next one I want to show you back on the high school page is called Alt Press Watch. And this is from a company called ProQuest. And Alt Press Watch is several hundred uh, publications that are non-mainstream 
Uh, there's conservative publications, there's liberal, there's middle of the road, um, things like Mother Earth News, Mother Jones. So Alt Press Watch is great for argumentative papers uh, where students can look for bias um, in articles on that topic, on you know, whatever topic they're writing about. But the example that I used was mock trial. And so we have mock trial, mock trials, uh, mock jury trials, and I'm just gonna let it go with mock trial. And so some of these, um, based on my earlier searching from a couple days ago, uh, are articles covering the national mock trial competition. But what I like is that, um, you know, some of these sort of outline the arguments from the mock trial. And so it's a great way for students to get a perspective of how to run a mock trial and different strategies. Um, so let me look at students argue the case of the video game killer in mock trial. And this is a newspaper article. And for this one, there's not a PDF but the full text is here down at the bottom. And then from here, I have many of the same tools that EBSCO offers me. I can save this as a PDF and put it on my hard drive. I can click the citation button and choose different citation formats. And here is the citation and it actually has the permalink as part of the citation. So I can copy that into a Google Doc or email or whatever. I can print it. And then if I look at all options, I have Google Drive and Google Classroom. So I can make reading this article an assignment. And then my, the tools, you know, some of the tools that we've already looked at were there. I can email it. And if I click email, I can check box, include bibliographic citations at end. And I can choose my citation type. And then I can email this to myself or somebody else. And so there it goes. So is everybody following along okay? Yeah. Any questions about Alt Press Watch? Um, like I said, you know, I did a mock trial search, but it could be on anything. Um, you know, you could, one of the, topics that's come up a lot. Um, we do a chat service on our website. And so I get questions from students every day, pretty much. And automation in manufacturing has been a, one that's come up a lot lately. So it must be a topic that a particular class is teaching or maybe a whole district but I can do um, automation in the workplace. And then here are different articles. We've got scholarly journals, magazines, scholarly journals, and so on. And over on the right, if I just wanted magazine, excuse me, left, magazine articles, I could click on magazines and just see the list of 148 magazine titles. 
or if I was interested in scholarly journals, I could click on that and it would filter out everything else. Okay. And like I said, it's non-mainstream. Um, and so it would be up to the student to, to look for any sort of bias and to build their argument for or against automation in an argumentative paper. All right, the next thing, if there aren't any questions, I'm going back to the high school page. And this time I'm scrolling down to Gail in context, opposing viewpoints. And the short of it is that this is a pro-con database. So if I'm doing automation in the workplace or in manufacturing, I just start typing and what it does, I could look at some of these other things like automation and control, automation software, but if it's in bold, it means that there is a pre-built unit on automation in the workplace. And so pro, uh, Opposing Viewpoints is built for middle school and up. It's used heavily by the community college system and the public universities as well as high schools. So what I have here is basically at the top of the page an encyclopedia article on automation in the workplace. And it says it's level five, which is the college level. And so here's the article. And what's nice about these overviews is they often have blue boxes with main ideas or questions to think about. So here we have some main ideas. Then we have critical thinking questions that you can use for discussion. And this is um, the text. Citation is at the bottom of the page, but I can also click the cite button in the upper right corner. Choose my citation format. <coughs> Pardon me. And then the permalink is also part of the citation. So if you or the student needed to come back to this at a later time, uh, you can use this permalink to get to it. I can do send to and send this to Google Drive. And in this case, it will create an opposing viewpoints folder. So let me go to my drive. And here's my Gale in context. And here's my automation in the workplace article. So that's really handy for organizing uh, articles on a particular topic, being able to put it into Google Drive. I can download it. And then here's the PDF of the article. And again, there's no digital rights management. So this will be on my hard drive till I take it out. And then the citation is at the bottom of the article. I can print it. I can do the permalink and grab the permalink that will take me to this article at a later time. And then there's also this feature called highlights and notes. So I'm going to go back to the top. I am signed in with my Google account. And you notice there's a Google Classroom button as well. So I can put this in Google Classroom and make an assignment. But there is a highlights and notes feature. So what I'm going to do is show you a few examples of doing highlights. Um, read further about technology costs. I'm going to save that. 
I'm going to read a little further. I'm going to do another highlight. Um, and I'm going to do one more just so you can see. Um, and make a note. All right. So now up in the upper right hand corner, it shows me I've got three highlights and notes. If I click on that button and then click view all highlights and notes. So here are the sections that I highlighted and then my notes and what I can do is send this to Google Drive. And then over here in Google Drive, here are my highlights and the notes that I made. And this is great for doing annotations. So um, if there were particular arguments that I wanted to use in my writing, I could make notes about that and have highlighted the text evidence of it. Um, there's just all kinds of, op, uh, you know, ways that you can use the highlights and notes. Any questions about that in particular? And you can see I can edit my notes as well. If I have additional um, commentary that I want to add. And I can also download the highlights and notes. And this is what it looks like. Okay. So I'm going to hit the back button to go back to automation in the workplace. And I'm going to go to results. Oh, time down on me. Okay. We'll go back in Galen Context, Opposing Viewpoints, Automation in the Workplace. Okay, so we looked at the Encyclopedia Overview type article. And then further down, we have summary of my search results that, that it, are in this unit on Automation in the Workplace. Featured viewpoints are basically um, editorial slash opinion pieces um, written by particular editors from ProQuest. If robots take our jobs, what will it mean for climate change? Automation will increase productivity, not unemployment. And all of these are going to take a stance um, either in favor of automation or in opposition. I have 23 other viewpoints that I can read. There are images, there are newspaper articles, uh, articles from academic journals. Reference are encyclopedia articles. So I can read about automation in the service industry or automation in the workplace or technology to give me some background on the topic. Audio tends to be um, podcasts and pieces from NPR and some other sources. So I could listen to this, how pilots interact with automation. There's also 194 magazine articles and there's infographics as well as websites and videos. So there is a lot here for a student to work through if they're gonna do an argumentative paper um, on a particular topic. If they don't know what they wanna write about, so they, they don't really know, so they can't do a search, if you go to the homepage for 
opposing viewpoints and scroll down to the bottom where it says browse all 484 issues. This gives you a list. Um, the national debate topics are here at the top in the upper left. But then maybe I want to look at genetically modified food or racial profiling, um, riots in the US, uh, school start times. So again, when there's, um, if there's one of the issues, one of the 484, it's basically this little prepackaged unit on that topic that will help the students orient their thinking and give them some ideas on what they can write about. Any questions about opposing viewpoints? Y'all are so quiet this morning. I'm not used to that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next up, back on the high school page, I'm scrolling to the top. I know it's kind of early to be thinking about AP exams, but when the time comes, if you go to Learning Express admissions test prep, students can use this to study for their AP exams. So what they will need to do is sign in or register. I already have an account. And the reason you have an account is so that it can track what you're doing. So previously I was working on the ACT science practice test. Um, I was also working on the AP chemistry practice test. Uh, in tutorials, I was working my way through the ACT writing test tutorial. I've got ebooks that I've downloaded called, you know, this one was the ACT word games. And if I had somehow deleted that off my phone, I can download it again. And the nice thing about these ebooks, there's no digital rights management. So the student can have this ebook. It's just a PDF. They can have it on their device for as long as they need it. It's not going to disappear. And these are, most of these are really big. They're a couple hundred pages long. And it's not a bunch of graphics and pictures of students studying. Let me just flip through here. It is content rich. And then the, the answers when there's questions are in the back. So depending, um, you know, a student might print out some sections but they certainly wouldn't want to print out the whole thing. Yes, yeah, so this one's 160 pages. So here in the center, I'm going to the College Admissions Test Prep Center, and I'm going down to prepare for your AP exam. And here's all the test prep available for AP. And let's say I'm doing English literature and composition. And so Learning Express is not a knowledge bank. So if they work their way through these practice exams, the questions don't change. It's the same two tests that they just, you know, theoretically could take multiple times as practice. So to start the test, I just click start test and I just want to show you a few features. So there's a couple ways to do this. Um, 
So it explains the test and how it works. There's a simulation where it will run for 180 minutes. And it will give me a sense of what it's like to take the AP exam. There's a practice version where you see the answers after you've finished. And then there's a learner option where you can check your answers as you go. Um, so if I chose practice and click start test, so here's a passage that I need to read. And then I'm going to answer questions. And I'm just randomly choosing things. OK. So when I choose this practice option, I can save this to finish later. So maybe I got interrupted or I can score my test. So let's say I finished, I can click score my test. Now, obviously I didn't finish because there's 58 questions and I only did five, but in, let's just say I had finished all of them. I can click score and it's gonna give me a score report. I can view my answers, see what I got right and what I got wrong. And I can jump to a question to see what the question was. If I just click on the number. And then it will explain the different sections, how many questions per section, how many I got right, how many I got wrong, how many I skipped, and then my score. And then if I didn't do very well, um, it might re make recommendations on other things that I can do to improve my score. Um, some of the test prep, there are ebooks that accompany the test. And so there might even be ebooks here that are recommended for me. So I just wanted to give you a quick view of that. Um, so you can keep it in the back of your mind that we do have AP exam prep and it is device friendly. So it's something that they can do on their phone if they need to, they certainly can, but they do need to create, to register and create an account. So is there any questions about Learning Express and the admissions test prep? Okay. The last couple things I want to show you, uh, we have this ebook collection, uh, academic ebook collection, and this is just ebooks. Um, so there's some things I can do. I can browse by subject, so biographies and memoirs. Uh, so Children Against Hitler, The Young Resistance Heroes of the Second World War. I can look at a PDF of this ebook. And bottom right, I can resize my page. And so from here, there's a few things I can do. Um, I've got my table of contents. I can jump to a chapter and download the chapter. Up here, I can get the permalink. So if I wanted to put this in my Google Classroom, I could copy the permalink and put it in there. But I also do have the Google Classroom integration. So I could throw this into a Google Classroom as an assignment. There is Google Drive. So I can do, do it by section and export, okay. 
let's just say export one, just as an example. And there it's gonna go into my EBSCO folder. And then also we have something up here in the upper right, full download. So if you, you can read the PDF online, you can put a link in Google Classroom, and then the full download, uh, this is the message you're gonna get. I'm gonna sign in with my Google account. So just sign in with Google, choose my account. All right, so I had to uh, sign in first. Um, do you all do, are you Chromebooks? Yes, we're Chromebooks. Okay. Well, students are, students are. Students, right. So if you wanted to assign this book to an entire class, you absolutely can. Um, if the students wanted to download the book to their Chromebooks, Overdrive is recommended. So I've got an ebook flyer that goes through um, most of the steps on how to download an ebook. Um, they could do it on their phone if they wanted to. Um, I, I can only show you so much because I'm on a state issued laptop. And because I haven't been in the office since March, I don't have Adobe Digital Editions on my hard drive. But if they were on their phone or a desktop computer or a traditional laptop, they would have to load Adobe Digital Editions. If any of you have used Kentucky Libraries Unbound, um, that uses OverDrive or Libby. And what's recommended for the Chromebooks is OverDrive. So if their devices are locked down, what you would need to do, um, I guess in the, at the district level is have them push out OverDrive app. There's not an extension for it. And then they would be able to download this book. Um, Right now, we've got a three month checkout period. But if that's not long enough, we can increase it up to a year. So I know that's a lot of information. <laughs> um, so again, we're in the EBSCO academic ebook collection. And I'm gonna go to new search. And so I could browse. Um, I'm just going to look for poetry. So if I just do poetry, which is not the, the most um, helpful of searches, but I've got 7,500 uh, results. So we've got poetry from the literary agenda. Poetry is an ebook. Uh, Left of Poetry, Depression America and the Formation of Modern Poetics. And these are all ebooks. So 7,500 7, ebooks. So there is a lot to choose from depending on what you're wanting to teach. And certainly you could combine poetry and World War II. And we have 95 eBooks where somehow World War II and poetry are in the subject headings. All right. Anybody have questions about the academic ebook collection? All right, I've got one more thing to show you. I'm back on the high school page. 
And I'm going to Team Book Cloud. Um, so as I said, with the academic eBooks, there's no limits on how many students can have a book checked out. Uh, we have no caps. It's not like the public library where maybe they only have 20 copies of a title. Um, same with Teen Book Cloud. You could assign a graphic novel or an ebook from here or an audiobook, and you could have 200 kids using that ebook, and it's not a problem. Um, the difference with Teen Book Cloud is that you have to do your reading online, there is not a download option. So there's a couple things I could do. I could do, um, I could search for a title. There's a search box up in the upper right hand corner. So I could look by author, by keywords, or I could search by title. If I wanted to just scroll through and see what was available, I can choose index off the blue bar. And so the index is handy. So I'm just zipping through here and I'm gonna stop here in a minute. Um, okay, Brave New World. And then we have the Brave New World enhanced ebook and the enhanced ebook will actually read the book to you and highlight the text as it goes along. So we have straight ebooks, which are text only, enhanced ebooks, which will read to you, and then um, things like, like Macbeth also has a graphic novel that goes with it, as well as an ebook and an enhanced ebook. And then there's also audiobooks. If I wanted to put this in Google Classroom, this is what I would do. I would click on the book ID number, and then I would copy this link and put it in my Google Classroom. And that is the permalink to this book. If you just click on the book, and try to copy the web address at the top of the page, or maybe you click read online and click the top of the page, that's not gonna work. You actually have to go to the index, find your book, and then click on the book ID number and copy that link. And if you notice, it's got the ID and password embedded in the link. Um, that's why you have to do it this way. All right. But let me show you this ebook, this enhanced ebook. So this is a little confusing. The green arrows are not play buttons. I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to advance, or I can use these arrows to advance. There's a chapter menu. I can take notes and those are cookie based to my device. And then over in the left hand corner on the bottom is a blue play button. Chapter one, a squat gray building of only 34 stories. Over the main entrance, the words Central London Hatchery and Conditioning Center. And in a shield, the world state's motto, community, identity, stability. And some of these ebooks also have sound. Um, so they have atmospheric sounds that make it kind of exciting. So I could also browse by um, a genre or uh, type. We've got drama and poetry, we've got graphic novels. Um, there's audiobooks. Um, and because I'm a big old dorky librarian, um, every year when my son and I decorate for Halloween, I come in here 
and we listen to Edgar Allan Poe stories in the audiobook section because um, it's kind of fun um, to set the tone for Halloween. So does anybody have questions about Teen Book Cloud? Um, one of the things I wanna point out, if you didn't wanna copy the link into your Google Classroom, there is a feature called My Assignments. And this is something that we don't set it up. We have uh, Tumble Books who owns Teen Book Cloud. They set it up. But this is where you can assign titles to students. You just have to tell them to go to my assignments and choose the right classroom. So if that's something that's of interest to you, um, just get in touch with me at kyvl at ky.gov and I will get you to the right person at uh, Tumble Books and they will set up accounts for you where you can do these assignments, okay? Well, either I've been really thorough or it's a Friday. <laughs> I think a little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe a little no. both. You know, you were very thorough. We appreciate that so much. Well, based on what Lauren told me, um, what I tried to do was just sort of come up with some scenarios in my head of things that you might try to do or things that you were looking for. Um, if I am completely off base, I, that's okay. You can tell me I'm off base. And if you need me in future, you can chat me up on the KYVL website if I'm online, if I'm not doing a training like this or you can email kyvl at ky.gov and I would be happy to help you. Um, just basically let me know what you need and how I can assist. Perfect, yeah, and then I see a lot oh, in, the list, in the list serve where you send stuff out. So if I see something, I might forward that on to the teachers. Oh, good, okay, <laughs> okay. Well, again, I'm just here to help out. Just let me know what I can do for you all. Well, we greatly appreciate it. Thank you for spending the time with us. Oh, sure. Thank you all for your time. You. Have a great and Friday. If you don't mind, and if you don't mind, send me that recording. I will. I will. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.